Hello, welcome back to Magic Cat Security Pen Testing Tutorials. That's a mouthful, huh? Well, today I'm going to go over a program called Sparta. This is a, a very, very good tool to use in your pen testing toolkit. So we're going to start by going to their website here. And Sparta's website just tells you basically what it is, what it does, everything here. Of course, we're going to go through and show you this. But, uh, and it takes you to download, which is going to take you basically to GitHub, which I'm going to show you that too. And yes, I'll have all of the download links available below the video. Um, but we're going to install some things that are required here also. So let's go to this. We're going to grab that and copy it. Then we'll go to our trusty terminal, all ready to go. And we're going to copy and paste that. And there we go. Get that done. You want to make sure you have all the required tools or apps, applications that it needs so that everything runs smoothly. It doesn't take long to install them, as you're going to see here. Almost through. go installing now boom completing the finalities oh it's finishing up the last little bit let's go over oh it's done we'll go over here and grab this one now I'm looking ahead a little bit I'm, I'm I know I have been map and Hydra but I tell you what, I'm not sure if I have cutie capped. So I'm just going to do this. Alright, we're going to paste that there and I'm going to add cutie capped. Whoops. Helps if I spell it right. Okay, and off we go. Boom, we're good. And it says one not upgraded. Let's go ahead and do the, um, whoops, can't type here today. Let's go ahead and do our update. <coughs> not a bad idea. And it looks like it did grab a few things here to update. So that's good. That's good. We want it to update. All right. And I'm going to grab that and type full upgrade let's see if it wants to grab oh it does want to grab something looks like there's a few things there it needs to upgrade okay so that's good too we're going to let it do that so now in the meantime I'm going to go back over here and well see it tells you to <laughs> that these can be installed with this right here I'm pretty sure we have Hydra and Nmap installed. I know I have Nmap and uh, Hydra, yes, comes with Parrot Security. Okay, so these, let's grab these. Okay, and come back to our terminal. And we got that. We've got that copied, so we're ready to go. We just need to let this complete. And I will probably cut away from the video here just to save you some time. Yeah, we're going to do that. Okay, so I will join you back here in just a few moments. And we're just going to cut away so this can do its thing and finish updating. All right, see you in a moment. All right, and we're back through the magic of video. <laughs> this is all the updates have run for that now. 
So here's where we're at now. We have one last install here, it looks like. So we're going to go ahead and do this one too. Okay. And I am. Oh, good. Okay, I didn't try sudo. Here we go. And yes. Just kind of let it do, let it do its thing. Now the reason that Sparta is so dependent upon these various different little installs is because of the fact that it offers so much in one client. And you'll see why this is one of my favorite apps. Um, I love the ones that combine a lot of stuff into one, so you don't have to be messing with a whole bunch of things. It's kind of like having a toolbox with you, with all the tools you need right there ready to go, instead of carrying six toolboxes, you know? So, anyway, that's my analogy. <laughs> and we're just about done here. There we go. Okay, so, let's clear all the mumbo jumbo. Whoop. Okay. All right, now, guess what's left? We're going to get this sucker in, installed on the system. So I'm going to do it the easier way. And uh, just go here and hit the copy button. And then we can do git clone and bam. Okay. So now we're going to CD into Sparta. And actually, let me do it like this. There we go. Okay, so here's what we got. Let's check out the README before we fire anything up. Okay, we did that already. Or actually, we did that part. Did we do the top one? Let's take a quick look back. Yeah, we did. We ran through that because we went through each of these. So, or actually, I'm. I, well, you could do either one of these. Honestly. Um, let me go ahead and throw that in there just in case. Because although this has been nearly instantaneous for you, this has been a couple of days for me before I was able to come back. Okay, good. That was done. All right. I thought so. All right. So we should have all the requirements. And there's no actual install file, it looks like. So... Uh, here we go. Okay. Place this part of file. Yep. All right, okay, so I'm going to go ahead and do the executable thing using REST, my little utility app. And that way we'll just catch, uh-oh, uh -oh. you know what I did forget? Uh, I forgot my little lazy shortcut doing this. Here we go. Okay, now we'll do rest. And I'll just run the catch all so I don't even have to look and see what needs to be set executable. Mm -hmm. So it'll go through any subdirectories and all in that application's main directory. Anything that needs to be executable will be made executable. Oh. Okay, then. Sorry about that, guys. My light just died for some reason not sure why okay so at this point we would type Sparta okay and just hit enter Ooh, we have to go into the directory first sorry about that okay now well actually let's do a Python I'm not sure if it's Python 3 or 1 or 2 let's see looks like just regular Python Okay, here we go. All right, now.
Excuse me for the noise in the background. I have two kitty cats that are getting rather restless. <laughs> so. Alrighty. So here we are. Okay, so basically what you do at this point, you've logged on, you know, you've, you've cracked that network or you're inside your client's network. What do you do now? Okay. <laughs> well, here's what we do. All right. So you just go ahead and click here and this will give you the ability to put in the scanning range. Okay. And we're going to do it for my little, um, tester land here. All right. And for those of you that, um, uh, kind of freaked out when I showed internal IPs and what have you. Um, internal IPs are not quite as important unless you're actually in the network. And just so you know, uh, my external IP is quite dynamic and I have an entirely separate network set up for my work here that has nothing to do with my home network, which is nice and secure and by itself. So no worries, but I do appreciate you looking out. Okay, so once you've done this and you're going to cover the scope within that IP range, you say add the scope and it's off and running. And there's kind of an invisible line here that you can grab to do this. Okay, so what it's going to do at this point is it is going to start scanning everything on the network and trying to identify it. Um, it will look for any servers or anything it can grab pictures of. Um, so you actually get screenshots and, of some things, which you go, well, you know, what use is that? It can be handy. Uh, for example, if it screenshots a router, that will tell you, <laughs> you see all my little lab machines set up here. Um, no, I don't have many operating systems set up on my testing lab at all. <laughs> but anyway... Um, if it takes, uh, say it catches a, uh, well, here you go. Here's a good example on my test router. So let's say on this address, see, which is normally a router's address, either, uh, usually the dot one, it did catch something on port 80. Well, it could have remote access to that particular thing. So let's see what it has for a screenshot that it took here for me for port 80. And look at there. So it gives me the model and everything of the type of router. So it can come in very handy to have a screenshot. The other thing is, and you see here, I've got, you get all kinds of information. Okay. I cannot stress enough how valuable this tool can be to you. Um, let me move that over a bit. There we go. Um, it also has a brute forcing tool here. Okay, for various different types of services. Okay, quite handy. All right, um, and you see it will. You can do this on more than one particular item. It just uh, or more than one system. It will open up new tabs as you go. Okay, um, the other thing is you can right click on something here and. You have various options depending upon what the system is because remember i told you it's going to try and identify each and every system so it'll go through doing that but then you have all kinds of additional options that you can run on it okay now suppose you're checking that network and you you, you want it to ignore your system because you know why waste time on that you know what's on your computer so you can right click it and say mark is checked so then it's kind of marked off the list and it knows to not be running a bunch of system checks on that particular one. And you can watch the progress down here. Um, you do have a configuration setting here that has just a few things you can set up. Okay. It's pretty self-explanatory. Um, under here, now this shows your hosts. Um, let me keep moving back on me. But anyway, if I can find, there's the sweet spot. Okay. You do have tabs up here also that give you uh, various services, like here's all the HTT, uh, HTTP services found so far, and it tells you what they're found on. Like, see, here's a uh, printer, and 
cursor the net bios snmp i mean you know everything it tells you exactly what you have there and then beyond that you have tools and these are some of the tools that it's using screen shooter you know the, the smtp default i mean snmp de default i can't talk today pardon me and the check <laughs> nikto love nikto it's a great system so this gives you an idea of what all is available and you know just um try running this on your on your own network and on your little test network and you can see all kinds of uh neat things that you can do with this it's very handy oh and by the way you can also keep notes so if you need to keep any kind of notes of uh, for your client that's an excellent place to include it in the scans when you're done um you can simply save and uh, also notice you can import i meant to tell you this you can import in map scans that you have previously run so you can start it here and see it starts uh, saves it as a sparta project okay and you just put your file name right there and that's about all for that um you can open it up to show them you know their uh status on on what you have there i don't believe that sparta allows you to save in any other type of format other than its proprietary format so the only drawback being that you have to actually open this tool to show results you can do screenshots um not sure if you can do an information print from a right click or a killer clear don't need that yeah i don't believe that perhaps that's a feature that they'll add in the future that would be nice all right so i'm just going to exit here and discard the changes and yes i want to terminate what's running and it automatically switches everything off as you can see okay all right so that's all for today thank you for joining me enjoy your um instructions with sparta and testing that out and we certainly hope that you enjoyed that tutorial thank you take care